here's another thing. I, I, I mentioned this the other day. Go to some lawyer, a real estate attorney, and say, tell him you want him to write you um, an, uh, an options contract to purchase real estate. And tell him you want the the right of the first right of refusal in the contract and tell him that you want any payments made in the exercise of the contract to be applied towards the purchase price and um, tell him you don't want to pay for the option or put in the contract that you're willing to pay a hundred dollars, some minimal amount. Okay. That's your options contract. And then there's other terms in there. Why would I do that? Why would I go to some lawyer? Because first of all, I'm going to use the lawyer for his expertise. Let's acknowledge some lawyers have expertise. Okay. And I'm going to tell him what I want. I'm not going to go to the lawyer and say, Hey, uh, how do I buy some real estate? That's dumb. Okay, you're really going to get taken to the cleaners if you do something like that. But if you go to the lawyer and say, look, I want you to do this thing for me. Here's what it is. In fact, I've probably I've written it up a little bit. I want you to finish it for me. <clears throat> then I have this options contract on my computer or wherever I put it on paper. Maybe I have some blanks on there that I can hand write stuff on a clipboard if I want to knock on somebody's door and buy something, right? So I'm going around my neighborhood and I see maybe there's a, <clears throat> a house for sale by owner. And it's been there. I keep driving by there and it's been there for three months. And property normally turns over in less than three months, but this is stuck. So there's something going on there, right? So I go over there and maybe the guy's still living there. So I say, I'd like to buy your house. That's how I start the conversation. I would like to buy your house. Who wouldn't want to talk to you then? The guy's trying to sell his house. Okay, so why do you want to sell, right? So you have this conversation with him. And so then you say to him, here's what I'd like to do. I just need you to give me the option to buy your house and I will buy it at a later date, a date within the next whatever time, okay? Just let me, give me the option so that way I know that I can exercise the option and then you're not gonna sell it to somebody else, you see? So a lot of times you can negotiate the contract. Now, sometimes a person might be a little informed and might look at the contract and say, man, I'm not gonna give you an option to buy my house and give you three months to figure it out for $100? You're gonna have to pay me $1,000 or $2,000, right? So be aware of that sort of situation. But here's what you're doing. You went to a lawyer. You spent a couple hundred dollars on having the lawyer write a contract that you can then go to a homeowner that you can negotiate obtaining control of the title on an options contract with little or no money out of pocket. What the heck is that options contract doing for you? That's your loan money. <laughs> Y'all ask me, where do I get the loan to buy the real estate? Write an options contract. Now, it is a numbers game, and it doesn't work in hot markets. It doesn't work that well in hot markets. It could. You, you have to kind of work it out. You kind of have to negotiate. Sometimes, if you want the option to be extended, maybe the option can be renewed month to month for a fee. It depends on what you're doing. So why would I do an options contract? Well, first of all, I'm going to get, I'm going to use it to get financing to buy some real estate. But let's say I, I can't, let's say I really want to buy the real estate, right? Well, I just need more time. So here's my option. Uh, I get the option to buy it. I mean, I can get more time by making an offer to buy it and then and, and doing it that way with a closing date. But if I have an options contract, I can then go call some people and see if I can get some financing to buy the property. I have time to do that. Or I could take my options contract and in the contract, I have my attorney write in there that my contract is assignable, that I can sell it. Ooh, so now I have the rights over the property. I have the right of first refusal. That means if anybody wants to buy the property while I have the option that's still valid, I get the first chance to say yes or no to the offer made to the homeowner. The homeowner requ is required by that options contract to let me look at the offer and make a decision. He can't say anything, right? The right of first refusal, that's what it's called. So what does that make me? Effectively, the owner of the property, right? So now... Because I'm the owner of the property, I can either take my time and go find the financing or and or I can sell the contract to someone who would want it. Well, what if I negotiate a smoking deal? What if I'm just a smart guy and I somehow came up with a really good price and the, the seller's happy, the owner's happy, and I locked them in to a 20% discount on fair market value that could turn over if I did it, let's say if I staged it properly, right? Because sometimes I only need good staging on the property. The guy's not, it's... 
for sale by owner. He doesn't understand what staging is. I know what it is. I got him to sign a contract that says, look, he'll sell to me for 20% under market value, right? So I know that if I go to a real estate investor and I and I sell it, I sell him the option so that I'm going to get the spread. Maybe it's going to be 20 or 10%. It's going to be somewhere in there, right? And I can sell the ultimate buyer. Maybe he's an investor or a homeowner, who knows? On the idea that we can get the fair market value because I understand and I know who to call about staging the property. You see, 